Hey everybody, welcome back to the sketch adventure. In today's episode, I'm going to be sketching some noses and paint while talking about my process. But before I get ahead of myself, I do want to take a moment and talk about some fundamental concepts. Here's some excellent portraits by John Singer Sargent. Let's focus on the noses and talk a bit about their structure. Sargent has simplified these noses into their essential planes. As long as you paint the essential characteristic planes of your model, not much else needs to be done. Of course, they do need to be the correct relative values and colors, which does make things a bit trickier, but even if the shapes are correct and the values are a bit off, it'll still have a level of credibility. I always struggle to achieve what I want with gouache, which is actually the reason why I like it so much. Because I've spent so much time in the past with very smudgy tools, it's important for me to train myself to make decisive marks that can't be altered too much. I find that markers, pens, and inks are great complementaries to pencils, pastels, and charcoal because each group of tools trains you in two very different ways. The first forces you to commit to your marks and make clear shapes, whereas the latter group can teach you a tremendous amount about subtlety and creating the illusion of form. Thinking back to the sergeant portraits, I try to simplify and group the values as much as I can. Sometimes I'll make a stroke too dark and there's not much I can do to fix it, so I'll just finish it and start another. Doing pages of these little studies is always an interesting experience. I end up making mistakes every time, and that really makes me want to paint more. Near the end of the video, I'll be doing another painting, but in oils. I'll apply what I've learned from gouache and it will end up being stronger as a result. I'll explain why during that segment. Another important concept to keep in mind while painting is that wherever two planes meet, there's a small corner that has a highlight. With noses, the most obvious example is where the side and top planes meet. In most cases, it's going to be quite subtle, but it's important to indicate it nonetheless. With each one of these noses, I try a slightly different approach. Sometimes I shift the skin tone more than what I'm seeing, and other times I group the colors closer together. The most important thing, however, is to have the correct planes as well as believable values. The final nose I paint is a good example of having incorrect planes. It looks as though the ball of the nose has been pushed into the face, which gives it a flatter than intended appearance. This is because those planes should have been extruded from the face a little bit more. Speaking two-dimensionally, the bottom of the nose should be shifted to the right. Now that I've painted these, I'm going to switch over to oils and paint another nose. However, this time I'll have the luxury of being able to adjust the shapes and the values freely. Like I was saying before in regards to smudgy tools, this endless flexibility can be the cause of overly mushy, unclear paintings, but if you combine a smudgy way of working with a clear concept of shapes, then it will allow you to create something fairly believable in a much shorter amount of time. And as we're getting to the end of this episode, I want to thank you all for coming on the adventure with me. I'm going to be trying to put out two episodes a week, and the focus for the near future is facial features, finishing off with the complete portrait. Another topic that I can't wait to cover in detail is composition. There's a lot that I want to say on it, but in the meantime, I'll see you on the next sketch adventure.